Amen. How many love the Lord this morning? Amen. And if I can, before they come, I just want to remind you this morning that Jesus is my God. Jesus is my King. Jesus is my Lord. He is my Savior. Jesus is my healer. He's my refuge. He's my provider. He's my strength. He's my defender. He's my protector. He is my peace, my joy. He is my life. And he is my rock. And just know that he is my everything. And Psalm 61, and 1 and 2 says, Hear my cry, O God, and attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. And when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Amen. So this morning, whatever you are going through, whatever answers you need in prayer, maybe just know someone that's going through a situation, begin to lift them up this morning. But God is here. The liberty is here this morning. If we could just stand one more time and just begin to worship him and praise him as our singers. You walk into the room, everything changes. Darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning. Nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. Oh, oh yes. When you walk into the room, everything changes. The darkness starts to tremble at the light that you bring. When you walk into the room, every heart starts burning, and nothing matters more than just to sit here at your feet and worship you. i 
Psalms 95 and 6. Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For He is our God, and we are the people of His pasture. In other words, He's my God, and I am His. He's my God. But when He looks at me, He's saying, He and she is also mine. The flock under His care. Let's pray. Lord, today I'm so thankful, God, for your presence that is in this room today. God, when you enter into the room, Lord, things begin to change. Lord, when you enter into the room, Lord, lives begin to change. When you enter into the room, Lord, resurrection life, Lord, enters into this room, Lord, with you when you walk in. And, Lord, if there's any dead thing that is in this room today, God, you have the power to bring it to life. If there's hurt in this room, you have the power to bring health. Lord, if there is suffering in this room, Lord, you have the power, God, to resurrect it and make what was dead alive again. God, you have that power, Lord, when you walk into this room. And I'm so thankful for it. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Amen. You can take your seat this morning. All of our guests, thank you for being with us. Our worship team, did they not do an amazing job this morning bringing in the presence of the Lord? What do you do when you can't stand? When you cannot stand, what do you do? I think about right now, war is happening and there's a country. You all know what's happening and that country may not be able to stand much longer. You know the story of what's happening and is bearing out in the Ukraine country, a sovereign country that's being invaded right now, and it's, it's on everything that you're looking at. You're probably uh, praying about it. We prayed about it this morning, and we're going to pray about it this, uh, at the end of this service. What do you do when you cannot stand? Have you ever been in a situation where you just, I don't know what else to do when you've done all to stand? The Scripture says stand. I, I know what the Scripture says there, but I'm going to talk to us today about when you cannot stand, that's when you need to kneel. When you cannot stand, you need to kneel. We're in our first love series. Last week we talked about the lifting up of the hands and how that brings in the presence of the Lord into your life. Today we're going to talk about kneeling before God. And we're going to bring some things out today that's going to help you, I believe. Uh, there is a <clears throat> Hebrew word that's called shakah. And simply, it just means the bowing down, the falling down flat, which means to worship. It's mentioned 170 times in the Bible. We know that God is holy. We know that, we know that because Moses, there was a time where he wanted to see the face of God, but he could not see the face of God because if he would have saw the face of God, he would have died. So he could only see the hinder parts of God. Matter of fact, he had to put a veil over his face, and there's a lot that goes into that particular story. But the Lord talks to us, the Bible talks to us about kneeling, about bowing down to him in certain situations. You see, God I cannot find in Scripture. 
where God ever asked us to bow to him. Now, we know that we should not be bowing to other gods. We know that there is no other God beside him. He is the only God, and there is none like him. We're taught not to bow down to false idols. You know the famous story that talks about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who would not bow down to the idol, and the Lord came in and revealed himself. He entered into the room, so to speak, and he showed himself to his people. But I'm going to talk about kneeling this morning and the power of kneeling before the Lord in this series that, we, that we're in. Last week we talked about the lifting up of hands. Today we're going to be talking about the kneeling before Him. You see, when you kneel before the Lord, there's three aspects of kneeling that I want to talk about today. The first one is when you kneel before God, it's, it's like you're kneeling in pursuit of Him. Mark 10 and 17 says, As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. And he would say, Good teacher or good master, he would say, What must I do to inherit eternal life? We know the story of the rich young ruler, but I I didn't really notice a lot of times that before he got to the master, before he got to the good teacher, he fell on his knees before the Lord. This is the rich young man. He, we know the story would bear things out. <clears throat> he would have one thing that he could not give up. He had a possession that he could not give over to the Lord. And the Lord, would, uh, Jesus would say, hey, listen, you lack us one thing. Sell all that you have and give it to the poor. Come and follow me. There was heaven on the other side of that transaction that the rich young ruler could not give up uh, his one thing, his possessions. He, he had everything that everybody wanted in possessions, but the one thing he needed that everybody needed, he could not give up that one thing to, to receive what he needed that everybody else really needed to have. You may believe in God this morning, and for those that are watching today, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to preach to those that are watching this morning and, and not necessarily to everybody in the room today. But, but if you believe in God... But you're not his, he is not your sole pursuit of your heart, then maybe there is one thing in your life that you need to give up. See, I believe in God, but if you truly believe in God, is he your sole pursuit? Is he the one thing that you are pursuing after? Because when you kneel down in prayer or kneel down in worship, uh, if you've ever been in that situation before where you've you just been in a situation where you did not know what to do, you did not have the answer, but it drove you, so to speak, to a place of kneeling, uh, you are pursuing God in your kneeling. Let me tell you, there have been battles that have been won because somebody took a knee and knelt before, before God. David, when he went to the brook, he knelt at the brook, he gathered the stones, and then he went to battle. You see, he could not win the battle in his life until he pursued God at a brook, pulling up the stones that he needed to, that he needed to have uh, to, to, for, to, to cast that stone in that faithful way. He could not have won that battle until he had a kneeling experience at a brook uh, and saying, God, I need direction. I don't know about you this morning, but there are some battles that I cannot win win on my own. There are some fights that I cannot fight on my own. There are some spiritual things that I cannot win on my own. If you're ever going to win something for the kingdom of God or win something for your family or win something, nay, for your marriage, what you need to do is you need to take a knee and bow in pursuit to the king of all kings. Kneeling before the Lord and seeking for God, you will pick up the right stones. You will go to the the right battle and when you you let go of that stone the Lord will guide the stone to the thing that is your hindrance but before you can have a victory you got to be like David you got to go to the right brook take a knee and say Lord I don't know how this is going to work he's got the he's got the knife he's got the sword he's got the shield he's got the height he's got everything that I don't have but the Lord says all I need from you is to kneel down and seek me pursue me and when you pursue me I will give you the victory that you need there is power 
when the church kneels before the Lord. When I think about kneeling, the first thing that comes to my mind is the, the great controversy that we have in our society today that talks about would you, should you stand or should you kneel and whether or not, uh, if you are kneeling, it, 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 is it a political statement and, and what you are trying to say when you're kneeling. I'm not talking about political things this morning. I'm talking about when you take a knee and you kneel before the Almighty God in His presence when He enters into the room and you kneel down before Him, you're just like a David, uh, you're just maybe like a rich young man that just needs an answer and the Lord is going to give you that answer but sometimes the only way you're going to get the answer is through lifting of hands and kneeling on your feet uh, or on your knees down in prayer. When life gives you more than you can stand, what you do is you kneel. When you don't have the answers, uh, you kneel. When you don't know what to do, you kneel. When you don't know how it's going to work out, you kneel. When the answer doesn't come the way you want it to come, you kneel kneel in prayer to the almighty king I'm going to take a bow this morning and I'm going to pursue my master because I need an answer from him when life gives you more than you can stand that's when you kneel down before him and you say God I need direction God I need the right stones to defeat the enemy Lord I need the right answer Unfortunately, with the rich young ruler, the, the rich young man, he, he had the education. It was too much for him. He had the wealth. It was too much for him. He had everything that everybody wanted. Unfortunately, it was too much for him. He had too much in his bag, too much in his life uh, to surrender his heart. Uh, he took a knee. Yes, he did. Uh, he bowed before the king. Yes, he did. But with the weight of what was in his life uh, was too much for him. He could not let it go in that knee kneeling moment and say Lord this is all yours. If a church is ever going to succeed in the hour that we're living whether it is City Well Church or any other church in this city it's going to be because the people of God know how to bow before the Lord in the moment of distress and say God I need you I've got to have you and I've got to have an answer. If we don't know how to kneel and we just stand on our own two feet we're going to fail more often. More winning happens when you're on your knees bowing before God than you could ever stand on your own two feet trying to win on your own you see again I'm going to talk to the, those that are watching today because you're the ones that needs to hear it this morning you see I'm a follower of Christ I, I, I would just say hey listen if you're a follower of Christ get to where Christ is if you say you're a follower of Christ then you put everything else on the back burner and you make God a, a priority in your life if you are a follower a true follower of Christ then you don't worry about an Egyptian economy when you know you're in a Goshen world when God says I'm blessing Goshen he's saying it doesn't matter what Egyptian has it doesn't matter what all is going on in the Egyptian world. The economy may be going south. The economy may be going bad. But I'm blessing my people in Goshen. You are a Goshen people living in an Egyptian world. In the Egyptian world, it doesn't matter what happens with the economy. It doesn't matter what happens with the stock market. God has his hands on your life because you are in a Goshen. My God. If I am a follower of Christ and I get to where Christ is and that is in the house of God. Woo! That three o'clock juice, man, it's really kicking in right now. My Lord. Some people say you're anointed or you might say you might be a little bit passionate. But, but let me tell you, why do you kneel before him? Because I kneel because I want to draw closer to him. You see the problem we run in sometimes as a church to those that are watching today? You're trying to do it on your own two feet. You're trying to make your own decisions. You're trying to say, I can do it all on my own. You're trying to figure it out on your own. You're trying to say, I can do it all on my own. And let me tell you, the best way to get the answer from God is not on your own two feet, but to kneel down and surrender your heart to him. Surrender Surrender your finances to him. Surrender everything that is wrong to him. And when you surrender on your knees, you will find more times that you're going to win for God. My God, when we get our own place, you, you, you're going to have to bring in, you, you, we're going to have to sell some of those things you put in your ears. It's already going to happen. I can feel it. When you draw near to him in your kneeling, you are pursuing him. 
And I don't know about you, but if anybody's ever pursuing me and I like what's pursuing me, you guess what's going to, I'm going to slow down and let you just have, I'm going to say, okay, I'm here. You know what I'm talking about, young, uh, maybe not, maybe so, I don't know about the young ladies, but ladies in the room, you just got, <clears throat> just got out of conference and you're probably feeling a little good. I hope you, hope you got a lot of the good Holy Ghost in you. Um, we haven't talked to the men yet, so we don't know about all that kind of stuff. But I heard, I heard it was a good ladies' conference, and you're feeling good about it. Don't you just like it when your guys pursue you? You don't have to answer that by the silence in the room. I don't know if that was an awkward situation there. We're like, should we answer? Should we not answer? Where is he really going with this? Again, let me talk to the camera today. Let me talk to the audience that's watching today. Young ladies that are watching today, you know you love it when your man pursues you. You know you love it when your man puts his arm around you, maybe kisses you on the cheek or whatever. Uh, you, may, you, may, you may love those kinds of things. Uh, but let me tell you, the Lord loves it when you pursue him. He loves it when you worship him. He loves it when you lift your hands and worship or, or on your feet or on your knees and you worship. It is a sign of, Lord, I am pursuing you and I'm pursuing you because I have a need that only you can answer. You see, kneeling is about pursuit, but kneeling is also about repentance. You see, the weight of sin can be so heavy Matter of fact, the, the weight of sin could be in our lives so strong that everything that we're going through is magnified, even the small details of life is magnified because of the weight of sin that is in our life. Uh, I, I will tell you, as beautiful as the sun is, and, and nobody can ever look at the sun directly for any period of time, but if you look at the sun, you would know that the sun is such a beautiful thing. And you would say, look at all this beauty and grandeur. And you can look at all those kinds of things. But let me tell you, you can look at the details of your life. Uh, and it could be like the reflection of a little penny. And you can look at that sun and you can say how beautiful it is. But you can magnify the problems in your life just at the little penny. If you put that penny right up to your eye, it will block out all the beauty and grandeur of what God wants to do in your life. That's the same thing in the same way that sin can work in your life if you don't have a knee or a kneel down in repentance. You could look at all the grandeur of things, all the great things God's doing in your life, uh, but you could block those all those things out just by the little thing that's in your life that's taking control of everything else. Again, for those that are watching today, it's the small things that destroy the vine. It's the small things that, that if we don't take a knee, so to speak, and kneel down in prayer, it can, it can ruin the whole thing. Jesus, as we know in Scripture, Jesus, <clears throat> he was looking at some empty boats. He was preaching, and, uh, and the crowds were getting bigger, and people were watching him, and they were kind of getting towards him. And Jesus noted, he looked aside, and he saw two empty boats. And, and so there were some fishermen there, and they were getting ready. They were washing their nets, and they were getting ready to, to go out and maybe go home, but Jesus said, hey, listen, I want you to, I'm going to get in this boat with you. I know you haven't had much success. This little boat wasn't very long. Some people think the boat's like super long, but it's not. It's a very narrow boat. And he said, listen, I want you to take this boat, these, both of these boats, and I, I want you to push them out to water. And so they pushed him out to water as Jesus is talking about. And so while he, Jesus is out there on the water and he's in these two boats, he's still ministering to the crowds. And so when he's done ministering to the crowds, he turns uh, to the disciples, what well, soon would be disciples, and, and he would say, hey, listen, uh, Peter, I want you to go deeper. I want you to go deeper to where you are and I want you to cast your nets down. And, and so here's what Peter would say. He would say, hey, listen, Jesus, uh, and this is kind of how we are in the church. Uh, hey, listen, Jesus, I did it my way back there. I've already been fishing back there. I've already cast my net back there. And we really didn't get much that we wanted to get. But Jesus said, hey, listen, I want you to go back there and cast your nets a second time. And when you cast your nets the second time, what's going to happen is when you bring that fish, that net up, it's going to be full of fish. It's not only going to be full of fish. It's going to break the nets. You see, let me tell you, you have put your faith in God and you've cast your net and maybe the answer has not come and you're willing to give up. Jesus is telling us this morning, Go back to where you were, where that faith you had in him, and cast your net the second time. I'm with you this time, and you put your net in that water, and whatever it is you've been praying about, when that lift comes up, that net comes up out of that water, you're going to have more answer in that net than you've ever had before. Stop 
doubting who I am. Stop doubting what I can do. Cast that net a second time. Get back into the house of God the second time. Worship me the second time. Praise me the second time. Give unto me the second time. I promise you when you put your net in the water, I promise you it's going to come up. But you see, here's Peter. He had to kneel in repentance because the scripture tells us in Luke 5 and 8, and I'm going super fast because I, 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 I don't know, that's just the way my mind works. But when Peter, Simon Peter realized what had happened, he fell on his knees before Jesus and said, Oh, Lord, please forgive me. I'm too much of a sinner to even be around you. Then that's the New Living Translation version. So Jesus said, I want you to do X, Y, and Z. Peter had doubt in his mind. He said, no, Lord, we cannot do that. And Jesus had to rebuff him and say, no, do what I'm telling you to do. And when you see what I'm telling you, you, when you do what I'm telling you to do, you will see the results of that. I'm just going to remind us today that while we may have X number of people here this morning and we're looking for a more permanent place, uh, some might say, why is it that you're wanting to do that? Uh, You know why I'm wanting to do that and why we're willing to do that? We're doing that because we're putting our net the second time. We're believing for God the second time. It didn't work out the first time I wanted it to work, uh, church. Uh, We've knocked on many of those doors and a lot of those doors have closed up, but that doesn't mean there's another door that God's going to open up. That doesn't mean that the next two doors, the Lord's not going to open up what he's looking for he's looking for a church that is faithful he's looking for a church that has faith in him he's looking for a church that says hey listen I will cast my net again I will try it again Lord it didn't work out my way but now your word is in it and now it's going to work when you put the word of the Lord in your circumstance when you cast your net in his word it will always work out well kneel in repentance You see, when you confess your sins, God is faithful. When I say, Lord, I'm so sorry for what I've done, he is faithful. Not only is he faithful, the scripture says he is just. In other words, it doesn't really matter what you have done. When you kneel down and you say, Lord, I am so sorry for what I have done like Peter did. It's a beautiful thing. Jesus never turns away a sinner with a repentant heart. He never returns uh, uh, turns away a sinner with a repentant heart. Just think about yourself. Think about where you have been or without him. And think about what it took to get you in the house of God. Think about all the times that you cast your net and there was nothing thing there but when he filled you with his spirit you came to church you cast your net and the Lord filled you with his spirit you were baptized in Jesus name and now God's doing great things in you let me tell you all it takes is somebody saying I'm so sorry Lord for what I've done let me just pause and say this for just a moment while I'm talking to the the church and the audience that is watching us if the Lord can forgive us for all of our many wrongdoings we should be able to forgive one another for their many wrongdoings I'm gonna just let me let me, let, me, let, me just, let me just say that again. You think about your own life and how far God has brought you from. Think about your lowest moment and where you were, because everybody probably thinks about it right now. Think about where you were like the prodigal son. And think about where you are today and how much grace and mercy it took to get you to here. Get you to here. Think about all the blood, sweat, and tears and prayers and fasting that people had to get you to where you are. Let me tell you, it, you didn't arrive here alone. You got here because God wanted you to be here, not necessarily in this room, but where you're in your walk with him. You got here because he allowed you to come here. He, you got here because of his grace and his mercy. And you got here because somebody loved you and looked at the positive things in your future, thinking about what you could be instead of thinking about what you were. So much I am thankful that the Lord didn't look at what I was, but looked at what I could be. Peter, when you go back out, I want you to just, just for a moment, just push offshore just for a little bit. He had to have a little bit of faith to do that. But the moment that he said, go deeper. When the Lord said, go deeper, that's when Peter started asking I've already been there. I've already gone deep, Lord, and you weren't there. I've already tried that, Lord, and you weren't there. You see, unfortunately, unfortunately, narrow is the way. I wish it was wide is the way to everlasting life and narrow is the way to destruction, but the Scripture says narrow is the way. Why is it? Because people get stuck on trying number one 
without God. And they never listen to trying number two when God is there. I don't know how it is, church, for those that are watching today, you need to hear this. You cannot be successful in the kingdom of God until you get rooted and grounded in the word of God. You find yourself planted in the church of God and you surrender your heart. You lift your hands and maybe I say you take a knee and you bow before God and you say, I'm sorry, I have not been been what I need to be. I'm sorry I'm not the example I need to be. I'm sorry I've messed things up and you got to say Lord get this pride out of my heart because the Lord draws unto him those that are, have a human or a, a humble heart but he resists the proud. If you want to get low then get on your knees and have humility and say God I'm the problem not somebody else. I'm the problem not the church. I'm the problem not the people of God. I'm I'm the problem, God, and i got to get on my knees. I've got to get on my knees and find God. And every time you get on your knees to pursue him, it's going to be like that pretty girl that you've been pursuing. Guess what? I hope she'll be there. No, she'll be there unless you're not good looking. But thankfully, we're all children in the Lord's eyes, and he loves us unconditionally, although that... That analogy may not work. But here we have Peter launching out a little bit. I'm going to minister. I've got Jesus with me. Now let's go deep, church. Let's go deep in the waters. It's going to require more faithfulness. It's going to, it's going to require more of us. It's going to require more fasting and more praying and now I say more giving it's going to require us to show up early to church it's going to require us to get out on Saturdays and evangelize the city when I don't want to get up it's going to mean when the Lord wakes me up at 3 o'clock in the morning when I don't like it and I get up anyway and I pray and ask God for direction that's the deeper that we're talking about it's not necessarily this mamby pamby kind of church I just want to show up because I like the preaching I show up because they got good food. I show up because the, the coffee's good. You show up because everything we do here is what? For him. We do it for him and we do it for others. And the others that come when they get here and we're doing what we're doing for him, he enters in the room. We kneel in pursuit. We kneel in repentance. And the last thing is we kneel in submission. If you think about other cultures, think about <clears throat> kneeling. Kneeling is a submission. It, it, it is submission to some degree, and it is also honor. You think about your uh, European type of curtsy. Before royalty, somebody royal walks in, you, you curtsy. <clears throat> if, if it's uh, Japanese uh, culture, you bow. If it's Muslim culture, there's a prayer mat that you're praying. Our culture does not like to submit. Our culture does not like to submit. <clears throat> Luke 22 and 29 says, Jesus withdrew, withdrew about a stone's throw beyond his disciples. Jesus knelt down. And he prayed, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but your will be done. The king of all, the one that would be robed in glory after he would die and raise, be raised from the tomb and would come back for a people, nay, I say, maybe soon would come for a people that are ready, that have their lamps trimmed and ready for the king's return. It's the bridegroom ready. He himself prayed the prayer of surrender. When he knelt down and he prayed, he prayed the prayer of surrender. How do you keep going? How is it you keep going in the midst of opposition? Kneeling to pray is often what gives you the strength to stand. 
Kneeling to pray is often what gives you the strength to stand. This is why we pray for our leaders. This is why in the environment that we're in right now, which nobody knows how this is going to turn out, kneeling before Christ empowers you to stand before men and women. How is it that I'm going to stand before whatever it is that I've got to give an account to? How is it that I'm going to stand before people? It is because you kneel before God. The kneeling before God empowers you to stand It's the kneeling in prayer that gives you strength in your knees to stand before whatever opposition you're facing. Scripture says it like this. Strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. How do I, when my heart is suffering spiritually, how is it when I feel like I'm getting a spiritual flu? How is it that when spiritually I am cold, I have a fever, so to speak. I can't remember the things that God did for me way back in the day, and I lose, I lose my consecration because I'm spiritually sick. How is it that I can have these things? It's because somewhere in your heart you became afraid. And whatever the opposition was or is started with your, with your heart and got you scared in your heart. And because you're scared in your heart and you fear, because of that fear that starts in the heart, it now works its way out to your hands. If you haven't lifted your hands in a while, maybe because there's fear in your heart. If you haven't knelt down in a while and searched for God in prayer, maybe it's because there's something fearful in your heart that you need to surrender before God. The very thing that you need to do in kneeling before God is the very thing that will strengthen you in your hour of need but that's how fear works it starts in the heart and it works its way outward strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees how do I strengthen the weak hands I do it in service to God and service to to others how do I confirm the feeble knees that are shaking because of the circumstance that I'm going through the way you do it is you you surrender to God you kneel down before him and you say God I cannot do this on my own I've got to have you when I don't know what to do and I don't know how to stand anymore what do I do I kneel We either take a bow today, church. One day we're all going to kneel down one way or another. Philippians 2, verse number 8, as I get ready to close. And being found in appearance as man, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to death. Even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I can either say today, Lord, I will kneel before you in surrender, in pursuing you, in repentance towards you, or in surrender to you. I can either do it now or one day you will be forced to do it. I choose today. I choose today to be the day that I surrender before the Lord. Thank you.